force. So this is what happened. And that's why you saw then people say uh, um, Mangosutu Butelezi was fighting other black people because he was trying to protect white interests. Mangosutu Butelezi had refused to be co-opted into the Bantustan system that would have legitimized the apartheid government in what would have been called the constellation of Southern African states, which would have included the Bantustans and the Sadek countries, and they would have all formed a United Nations or United States in which the apartheid government would lead, but it would be legitimized as the as, 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 as a state of separate development because all other African countries, other Southern African countries have accepted that. Mangosuji Butelezi refused that. Are you, are you saying he, he was a good guy? Sadek countries refused that. And the reason why Mangosutu refused is he said, we need you to get all our comrades that are in prison out, then we negotiate mm. the way forward for South Africa as one nation. We don't want this, this Matanzima, uh, 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 what you call it, and um, who is our guy, Mangope, separate development <laughs> type of arrangement. Sure. Are you so, saying Mungo Suti was a good guy that was trying to unite? He had his, he had his problems. Sure. He had his problems. He was compromised in his own ways like every other human but being. Generally but generally he had a good vision of saying no negotiation for South African peace or South African independence can happen yeah. with me alone without the fighters in prison. Now imagine who was in prison, who was in exile. It was the ANC. It was the PAC and their, and their fighting wings. So th th this, this notion that the ANC then came back and said, we are the liberators, and therefore we are going to negotiate on our own, was doing exactly what it is that Mangosutu Butelezi refused to do. So this is why you see that uh, he began to fight back. Because then the very same whites who had refused to create a legitimization of the Bantustan system uh, then went and, 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 and partnered with him to say, let's destabilize the country accordingly. And that's why you started having the fights with uh, uh, Inkata and so forth and so on. But it, for me, the first, very first sellout was the ANC. Because when it went to Kodesa, it should have invited everybody to the table. And I've heard that's one of the big issues, that they, they went there alone. And yeah. to this day, it's not even, even if they went alone, they didn't call out to bring other people and say, guys, this is what's happening. What do you think? And they remember, made those decisions on their own. And remember, they, would, they should have invited all the South African liberation movements, mm -hmm. and they should have invited to that very same table the armies of SADC that had actually defeated the Boers. Yeah. Because the, the Boers had been defeated by guns, tanks, and jets. That's the only language that a white man understands. And they were being given these weapons. They were being given weapons by other, uh, by the Americans, including nuclear technology and nuclear weapons. Mm. But they were still defeated by the Cubans, by the Angolans, by the Zimbabweans, Mozambicans, and Namibians. Mm. Those should have sat at the table too. Because what, what happened by them not sitting at the table is that the apartheid system used its military, but they also used its, their private companies that were very well invested in SADC to destroy SADC countries economically through sanctions and then militarily through the military in what was a state called the State Security Council. So when ANC negotiated with the Boers secretly, got shares in these apartheid companies in Anglo-America that was instrumental in financing the manufacture of bullets, the manufacture of tear gas, the manufacture of bombs and the military machinery that was in this country, when the ANC then said, let us reconcile, let's be friends. White people and black people are going to be friends. We've got interest in your companies now. They allowed us within SADC to be forced to maintain these white companies, which I call economic weapons, in our own countries because they were now with our friends, the ANC. So those companies continued to sabotage our economies. Zimbabwe had the biggest steel manufacturing company in Southern Hemisphere. Nothing in Australia, nothing in Brazil could beat it. It was destroyed by Anglo-America, sabotaging that institution because they did not want a black country to have the power to control steel. And that's why when you guys get your independence, the very first thing they do is they privatize Sasso and they also privatize uh, uh, ESCO. ESCO, yeah. Why? Because they wanted to deprive you of the power to make chemicals, the power to make steel, and the power to make your own military equipment. And that's why right now they're fighting to take Denal so that you don't have the capacity to manufacture the trucks and the guns and the machinery that Denal manufactures. Sure.
white people are always thinking 300 years ahead to continue subjugation because the way they've created their civilization, they say it's innovation, it's not innovation, it's stealing. They want to maintain their stealing by controlling the weapons that are used to steal, just like Etsotzi in, in Hillbrow wants to maintain his right to have a firearm when you are not armed or right to have an AK-47. It's the same thing that is happening on, a, on an industrial scale or a national scale.